I got a new battery from Temgot, T-E-M-G-O-T. That's the way it's pronounced. It's got a really, really cool screen on the top of the battery. 12 volts, 100 amp hours, lithium iron phosphate battery. We're going to take a look and put it on the tester today. Okay, this is the battery right here. And what I want to do is show you the overhead. This is the Amazon page that they sent me. They also have a website of their own. $289 for a 100 amp hour battery is cheap. That's that's really good. And you can see the screen on top of it right there, which I'm going to show you here in a second. Uh, so I'm curious to see how this, is, uh, this thing is going to perform. We're going to put this on the West Mountain Radio uh, CBA5 battery testing um, device and software and see how it performs. But before we do that, I am going to show you. Okay, so I got a, I got a zoom nip on the screen. This is a strap on the top of it here. Kind of nice nice strap. Like most lithium, lithium iron phosphate batteries, this is not heavy. It's not very heavy at all. But we can turn the screen on right there. Right there. Boots up for a second. And as of yet, I don't have... I haven't figured out how to turn the screen off. It goes off by itself after... 20 minutes, a half hour. I haven't actually timed it yet, but uh, but right now it, you, you you press that button to turn it on, and it shows you 99% standby right there. It shows you 13.3 volts, the temperature in Celsius. You might be able to change that. Okay, the next screen over shows you the input and output, or the max temp. Okay, so you can probably change that. Max temp and the minimum temp. 20.8 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that means. How many recharge cycles? I like it when these batteries give you this information on how many, how many times it's been recharged. That way, if you, I don't know, if you buy a used battery, you can look at it and see that. And if you have the battery on your RV or in your battery box or something like that, you can see how many times you've recharged it. I, I, li I like that information. That way, you know how much longer the battery is going to last. Okay. And it would give us information there if it was plugged into something right now. And then uh, this, I'm not sure what that screen means right there. It says page three on the bottom. I don't know. One, two, three, and four says 3,326 or 27 millivolts. Because it says there's four lines there, and then it comes back here. But if you go to the, the cycles, it's only on one. So maybe that's just a testing phase they had it in. I'm not sure. You can turn that off and on, charge off and on, discharge off and on. So you can turn the battery off and on by touch screen. That tells you the top one tells you the current current tells you the the uh, right now voltage and the right now temperature and it says 99 999 hours and 24 minutes until empty that's because there's nothing drawing on it right now i charged this battery about a week ago i wanted to make sure it had a full charge before i put it on the tester charged it a week ago it's still at 99 percent. so hats off to the uh to the ability for it to actually hold a charge for a long time with nothing drawing from it. So we're going to put it on the West Mountain Radio software right now and see what happens. All right, this is the West Mountain Radio CBA5 software that is running on the computer behind me. All right, so we've got new test and test name. I'm going to put uh, Temgot. Okay, LiPo4, I'm going to click on detect. Okay, it detects 13.3 volts at 100 amp hours with four cells. The only thing it really detects is the uh, voltage, and sometimes it'll change the cells, which is usually wrong. But four cells is correct, and uh, 100 amp hours is correct, because that's what I tested last time. So now, cutoff voltage is 10. I guess that's probably okay. You know, I wish... I, I should try one of these tests at the cutoff voltage of, a, like, 11.2, because anything less than that is going to not be viable and ruin your battery unless your battery has a bms okay and a lot of these tests the battery bms cuts it off long before it gets down to 10 volts so that right there is probably fine because this battery does have a bms let's go ahead and click on start all right it's running right there now 100 amp hour 100 hours is about four days four hours 96 hours is four days so i'm gonna have to come back to this test four days from now happy thanksgiving that's about when i'm doing it right now it looks like it's reading about it's uh drawing about 0 0.88 amps okay so it's set to draw one amp and when it first started it'll it's drawing 0 0.88 amps so not quite one amp so in theory if it stays if it stays at that current it should last longer than 100 amp hours we'll see stay tuned and uh we will be back all right we are finished and after about nine about uh, 90 well actually no a little under under four days it looks like right here all right it looks like we've got 94 amp hours out of this battery 
and I will share a couple of screenshot overlays here. I took pictures of the top of the screen while the battery test was going, and it was showing the draw in the battery, and it was showing how much amp hours was left. So again, the screen is really cool. I think it's a neat feature to have that screen like that. Now, one thing I, I will say is it looks like the test cut this battery off not the BMS. So it makes me wonder if there's a BMS actually in this battery at all. I might have to check with the company and see. Let me move this a little bit over here. Okay, so you can see right there where it ended. Like I came in when it was like basically right in here where my where my mouse is right now. I came in and, and it was like the last 30 minutes or so, maybe 45 minutes before the test ended. And it was down Actually, it was more like right here because it was down below like like I would expect the BMS to cut it off somewhere between 11 and 11.5 volts, maybe like 11.2 volts, something like that. It didn't. In fact, the software was set to end the test at 10.5 so that you don't bring it down too far, which a BMS should keep you from doing that. So it doesn't really look like the BMS in this thing is working or maybe it just doesn't have a BMS. I'm not sure. I may have to check with the company and see, but let, let's assume, let's assume it doesn't have a BMS. I think that I would probably take this thing and say, you know what, I'm going to put it in a battery box and use it for a while and just kind of see how it performs over the next three to six months, because what else am I going to do with it now that I've done the test on it? And I'd like to see how it works in a real world environment. I certainly like that big screen on it. I like the big screen, the big read, readout on the screen, be able to look at it and see what's it going to draw, how much longer have I got before I have to, I have to charge it or something before it gets down to like 11 volts or something because like you're not going to want to run a radio less than like 12 volts 12.0 when it gets down to like 11.8 or lower than that the radio does not operate correctly so you're not going to want to do that it might be even more maybe like 12.2 i mean optimally it's supposed to run on 13.8 volts but we'll see so i'll put a link in the description below you guys can go look at this i'm going to also email the company and say hey should this thing have a bms because it doesn't look like it's working if, if so